Hi, it's Bruce. So today I'm out at the bee yard and um, DC from DC's Gadgets is going to be doing a queen class. So I'm going to go along with him. See how what you think. See what you think. If you watch queen rearing videos on YouTube, uh, by and large, most of the people that have a lot of videos, we've got lots and lots of bees. And they make these huge cell buildings. And most of them will tell you the most important thing in making queens is the cell building. I disagree. I think your cell builders are secondary. I think the most important thing for you making queens is to realize how many queens you can actually make. If you've only got two beehives, you can't make 50 queens. And the same thing, if you've only got enough boxes to mate four or five queens, you can't make more than four or five queens. So you've got to be practical at the same time. So what I'm doing, I am backyard. I can only practically put 20 queens that to be made at any one time. That's pretty much my limit because of my resources. And queens don't come back on the same week. So once I've got my mating nukes established, I really cannot practically make more than about six or seven queens a week. So I got way I'm rotating through the boxes already out there. So that's my goal. If I, if I graft, I usually graft about 10 or 12. Very seldom do I get 100% of the grafts. Um, very, sometimes they'll start eight or 10, they only finish seven or eight. I'm happy with that. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. Occasionally they give me all 12. It can become a problem. I haven't had too much problem lately. I'll just, I'll find other boxes, put things together, make it work. So that's all I'm looking for. So if you're a backyard beekeeper, you want to make five or six queens a week, the method I'm going to show you will make you five or six queens. I know it works because I do this. This is how I do it all the time, and it works. And it works fine for me. One of the most common ways people make queens in the backyard is this is a closed cell building. And what this does, you put bees in here, and we're actually going to do this in a modified version of this in the yard. What this is good for is if you're making queens all in one yard, because what happens is you take bees out of a beehive and you shake them in a box, 90% of those bees are going to go back to their home because it's in the same yard. And so this, well, this is what this is for. So if you've got two or three yards and you want to set a cell builder up, that works better. That's what I was doing for several years because I have bees in like four, four or five locations. I can go into one yard, I can shake bees in a box, I can take it home, I can leave it open, the bees aren't going to go back home. But in this case, if I lift it open, they go back home. So the way this works is you, you've got a screen bottom, you've got screened open, so you get plenty of air. You usually put a water dish in the bottom. I got one right here. You put a little dish of water in there with a sponge and that sits in the bottom. And the sponge is so the bees don't get stuck in the water and drown. They can land on it and they suck up the water. And you put a few frames of bees in here and you close this thing up and you're gonna leave it overnight or maybe two days at the most. And they're gonna make your cells. So you put, depending on how many you want, you can put two frames of bees in that box and they can make you five queen cells. And if that's all you want, it'll work. If you want more than that, you put more bees in there. But two frames of bees will usually get you five queen cells. So that's a closed builder. The other ones are open builders and we're gonna make a couple different open builders. And then we'll pull a couple of frames out and you guys can come out here and you can play around pulling graft larvae out. And then we're gonna leave them queenless. So we, we start making builders now by three o'clock they'll be queenless and they'll know they're queenless they'll start getting excited they'll make queens faster some some people will put their cell builder together and wait overnight i experimented with this a couple years back how long it really takes before bees become excited and make queens it took me like two months to do this but i tried one hour i went in and tried to make queens they made like two queens and i tried two hours and make queens make like four queens and then i tried three hours and I made like 10 out of 12. and so Three hours seems to be the threshold. If they're queenless for about three hours, anything past that, you're just wasting time. And they'll make queens fast. If you've got enough time in the day, if you graft at noon, and you go back and look in that same beehive at six or seven o'clock in the evening, you'll know if they're making queens. They'll, they'll have the wax on top of the cups, so they'll be doing it. This is the box of bees I got yesterday. They were underneath the culvert. There's not a whole lot in here. I'm actually shake a frame in. I want to take that frame there. I left one hole empty. 
I knew I was going to do this. So because we live in an area with a lot of Africanized potential, I don't like to raise queens so much from local bees. So I was up in South Carolina last month. I bought three queens from a queen producer up there, and that's what's in here. I've got I've got a frame of larva from the beehive in my backyard that came from that South Carolina queen or one of them. And we're going to actually graft off of this frame. So I'll stick it in here, and I'll get along fine. Open that up. And get in here. Come on. It'll figure it out. Alright, so this outside frame that we're gonna actually graft off of this stuff away key. Alright, so let's go build a builder. Oh I need an eight frame box and a lid. And so one method people use for making queens is something they call a cloak board. And what that does is you've got two or three boxes of bees. And as long as you can keep the queen down the bottom, you can put a divider between the boxes and the bees above that divider will not be able to sense the queen pheromone and so they become queenless and they'll go into that panic mode and start making queens. There's, there's three reasons why bees make queens. One is they want to swarm, want to procreate, want to swarm. That's the first reason. The second reason is something is wrong with their queen and we replace her. It's called supersedure. And the third reason is an emergency response. Something has happened to their queen, they need to make a new queen. So as a queen producer, we try to capitalize on two of those aspects. We want to put lots and lots of bees in a box, which crowds them, so they may have the tendency to swarm. We also take the queen away, which puts them in the emergency response and so they'll make queens for us. So what I'm gonna do here is kind of a, it's kind of a variation of a cloak board and a closed builder. So the queen's in the bottom of this box, as long as I'm going to stick this, this between the two, and we'll make sure there's a bunch of bees in this top box. And then this top box becomes my cell builder. And they're going to be stuck in here for one day. And we'll put a frame of larva in here later. Now this was actually a removal I did from a... Uh, well, a guy called it a fairy house. It started out as going to be a birdhouse. He actually had a, he had a log in his backyard that... Um, he was going to put a birdhouse on top of it, and his daughter's going to make a fairy house from a book they'd read. So he made this ornate yard ornament, and the, the top of this thing was just jam-packed full of bees. They're all in here. So first thing I want to do, I'd like to go down. I would like to uh, the queen is not marked, if we spot her, I'll mark her. But she was in a cage for three days, and I let her out Thursday. Oh wait, that's a drone, that's a drone. Yeah, I'd like to see her before I start shaking more bees into that box. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see some eggs in here somewhere. Make sure she's laying. She's been out since Thursday. Mm -hmm. They're making a queen cell. A, a couple queen there, cells. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of them. Yeah, that might have been because I had caged her for a couple days. One, two, three, four. There's several. Yeah. There's some on the other side, side too. <laughs> yeah, I had her in a cage. I took this off the guy from this guy's house on um, Sunday night, and I couldn't get over here until Thursday. When I do removal, when I do removal, I like to like to leave the queen cage for at least three days. I've had better luck with the uh, bees staying if I do that. But if she's not running around the box making pheromones, they can do this on you. There she is, right there. Let's paint her while we're doing this. Got a marker? Yeah. Where'd she go? Should we go back on that side? She, I think she's somewhere in the middle. I'll see here. She's hiding. Mm. Maybe she's under the bees. I don't know, they usually get out of there. I know she's on that frame. Hang on to that for a minute. I know she's on that frame, so we're going to shake some bees in here. Because mm -hmm. I want to put a bunch of bees in there.
So that's going to become a closed building. That's going to go. Okay. So we're going to put those bees in there too. Okay, so that's now my closed builder. It won't take long. They'll figure out there's no queen in there and they'll get excited. And what I'll probably do is come over here. I don't have my warming box with me. I'll be here tomorrow anyway, so I'll come over here tomorrow. There she is. I'll come here tomorrow with my warming box. I'll cut those cells off and I'll stick them in the incubator. If you watch Michael Palmer, he's out of St. Albans, Vermont. He's probably one of the bigger queen producers in the country. He'll build a box like six or eight boxes high. And he'll set it up where um, he's just packed full of bees. He'll take the whole stack, he'll move it over and spin it around. So you put your queen in the bottom and then he'll put the top box in the same location. Your foragers are coming back to this location. They're going to strengthen this box. And then this queen is down below. She'll stay with the brood and stand on that side. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move this over. I'm going to put an eight frame right here. I'm going to set it up so we have an open building right here. I'm going to slide this over. It's been uh, I'm getting good and mad. Oh yeah. This is a box full of beads. I was going to split it a week ago. I got to thinking about it. I decided I was going to do this instead. Come over here and shaking all the bees out of the top box and put on a queen scooter. I just didn't have time. This is a shaker box, so it's just a wooden box with a queen scooter on the bottom. I can shake bees in there, and the queen will get stuck in the box. So, this way, because I don't spot her on a frame, I'll spot her in a box and grab her. I don't like putting brood frames in my cell builders. So I'm actually looking for more food than brood. Every time I put brood frames in my cell builders, they make queens on the brood frame, not in my cups. So what I'm looking for is six or seven frames of mainly food. Just nectar. She's laying real good. She likes that top box. with open nectar. Caps honey is okay, but you want open nectar because your bees, they've got to have an immediate food source to eat to start making wax to start drawing on the, on the cups. And if possible, put a jar of sugar water on top of it too. That's, that's, nice. that's honey.
this is always a pain because you're looking for the queen and you don't find her and then you put your grass in if you do this and you put grass in you come back the next day and all your grass are gone the queen's in that box there's there's usually two reasons or actually there's three reasons why they won't take your grass the first one is there's a queen in your box it could be a virgin queen, it doesn't matter. If there's a queen in the cell builder, it will take your grass. The second reason is your grass are too old. Um, you've got from like day four to day six. So it's, you got a pretty good window. And the, second, the third reason why they won't take them is because you damaged the larva when you moved it. So, so we'll all play around grafting here in a little bit. If you, if you got to sit there and play with it to get the larva out of the cup, you, you damaged it. You, you got to be able to get the tool in, pick her up, and put her in the in the thing without screwing with it. If you roll it around any at all, you've damaged it and it's gone. Look around there, just cold. It's also good to put. Um, a frame of like a partially drawn comb or even an empty frame for them to put wax on because sometimes they'll they want to they want to make comb and they'll draw wax between your queen cells which makes it harder to cut your queen cells out got a pretty good queen in there that's nice yeah we, let's see we were in here a couple weeks ago and i was going to split it and then I thought, you know what, Nick will just do this instead. Now, if you split it, would you have to take the split to another spot? Well, we can do what we're doing right here. This is like called a walk-away split. You can put them side by side, especially since we've rotated entrances. And you're gonna, the forester is already coming back here. Like, you folks are standing in the flight path, so they're getting backed up behind you. But you'll see most of the foragers are coming back here already. Yeah, drones. Drones. Yeah. What was that liquid that just came out? Nectar. I haven't seen the eggs in there. On both sides, I think she was laying mainly in that top box. I don't know if this queen is marked. <laughs> you want pollen? I mean, this is not a great pollen frame, but there is some pollen on the frame. You can see pockets in there. You gotta have some pollen. Let me look at the next one. I, I really would like to have a frame that's like covered in pollen. You want to put when you put your when you put your grass in, you want pollen on one side and open nectar on the other side. So the bees that are feeding them, making a royal jelly, they have easy access to both. I like that one. See the pollen in there? Yeah, that's nice. That's it. That's a nice little pollen. So we'll keep this one. See the pollen? There's a nice pocket of pollen right in there. Now I'm going to look around here and see if I spot the queen. Oh, 
cool. Can we show the clean? Let me box right over here. Put that right here. Put that right there. Right there. Because it's only going to be an hour or two. Other than space, it's going to be sober. Hmm? I'm going to take her on one side and pull on the other, and my graph bar is going to go in the middle. Now, if when I'm doing this at home, if I have the time, I'll go ahead and put a, put a bar and stuff on in the beehive. And just, and We'll put some cups in this and make it sit in the truck. So you got several different types of graphing tools. And if you're going to do this, you need to have variety. Because different things work different methods. This is the most common. It's called the Chinese tool. It has a little membrane here that is flexible. This one's pretty stiff. Um, you want one that's really soft so it bends easy. That one bends pretty easy. The idea of this is if you stick it under the larva, it'll follow the contour of the cup and come under the larva and you can scoop it out. Um, old dark hard comb works best. I actually find this is, I think it's foundation, I can't tell. Yes, yeah, foundation. I have found I have better luck on natural comb than I do on foundation. A lot of the foundation is flat on the bottom and it makes it hard to get it to bend over. Um, new comb is so soft, this tool will go right through it without bending. And so I've got some hooks. And this is what I made the first year a piece of paper clip. There is actually a hook on the bottom of that thing. And you can get in there and you can cook the larva with it and stick it and in the cup. Sorry to interrupt you, but that one's flexible like the other one? No, it's just what you use you hook the larva. So your larva is going to be in a U shape. When I do this, I try to grab her right in the right in the top of that U shape. So mm -hmm. half it's hanging down and just let her drop off. And the same thing, these two things here. Same basic idea. It's a little tiny hook. Um, different sizes. And if it's really, really soft comb, I'll graph with one of these things. But I prefer to use the Chinese tool, that's usually the most effective. And so I typically try to get older hard comb to graft off of. Now some people will wet the... That's kind of a stiff tip, let me find them with a soft tip. Some people will wet the grafting tool. Um, I haven't really seen a difference. Uh, if I get a lot of junk on it, I'll lick it off. World jelly and larva taste like crap. But, you know, you, it's good for you. <laughs> you're sitting in a truck, you gotta get it cleaned off. So, so when you get in here, you're looking for a very small larva. And a light makes a huge difference. See this? So, some people will use a headlight. I like to have the flashlight. And I'm looking at this whole frame is like almost a perfect age. What you can do if it makes it easier, you can actually break the cell open a little bit. And you want to go straight in the cell, get the, get the underneath the larva and scoop it out. Ah, oh, put a bend in there. A little bit easier. Now that's got a split in the tip. That was no good. There's no honey in there, and you, you see, there's like they're sticking their heads in there. What is that supposed to mean? They might be cleaning it off, or cleaning it out, or they might be looking for some, some honey. A little bend oh. in the tip of that. So just go down the side of the cell and try to get under the larva, scoop it out. It's not on there. Let me see that one. Did you keep that in half, Did you throw that? Oh, I threw it in the car. Yeah. 
you buy these tools, they're cheap. They're like 80 cents a piece. You buy lots of them, because out of a dozen, you may find two that actually work. There you go. So there is the larva. And that's the size you're looking for. Anybody, can you see that? And you need, you need the cheaters. So you catch it on the tip, you put the tip in the bottom of the cup, and you press the plunger down, and it, it just scrapes it right off into the cup. All right? And that just, ma that makes a queen, or the just... Well, that's, you move the cell. If you haven't, if you didn't damage the larva, a little bit of royal jelly in there, and it's the right age, you got a good chance that the bees are gonna turn into a queen. So okay. who wants to do this? I'll give it a shot. Right, do they you go, have anything inside those cups? No, they're just dry, dry cups. Dry cups. Now some people will, will graft wet. They'll they'll scoop royal jelly out of other cells and stick it in the cup. Some people will put a drop of honey. Um, I read an article where somebody was putting apple juice, a drop of apple juice to wet it. It's more work for me. I I graft. I tend to graft a little bit older because I'm looking for a larva that has some royal jelly in the cup in the cell with it. So I might be grafting like a day four and a half or day five. I'm getting clean, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got it. Got one, and I he now, put one in this cup already. Yes, right? so you want the second cup? He's telling these guys this reminds me of picking somebody else's nose for them. Yeah, yeah. It's so. Oh. Did she get it? Um, yes, you did. Woo! Okay, go right in into the same, right in the middle of the cup. I'll hold the light. Okay. So, turn the cup over. Yeah, that's where right, I had a hard time. Right I had a hard down time the middle. Keeping my hands steady to get now, it once in. Once you're at the bottom, go ahead and use the plunger. Did you push it off? Yeah. Okay, cool. Good job. Yay! Do another one. Do, do another one. Do you want me to do them on for you? Yeah. <laughs> do a couple. Okay. DC, you need a tool that is longer. Oh, you got another one? Yep. Yeah. Uh, sure. Nice. Oh, she's got it down pat. She's got yeah. it. Man. Yeah. But she went in and then she went to the. Yeah, I don't want to grab Yeah, there's a technique to it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it, it takes practice. Yeah, you got me on the last one. Touch on the last mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Okay, so this will the sticky in the two boxes. Now we're in Florida, it's really humid. This I've not had any problem with not covering them. If you're up in the with dry, you gotta cover them or they'll dry out. So I've got two bars here. And we're gonna go stick these in beehives. Is it kind of essentially a, a, a combination of a clothes builder and a cloak board. What a cloak board is, if you've got two or three boxes of bees, you can make sure you clean in the bottom and put a hard board in there for her pheromone can't cross and you raise clean bees above it. That's called a cloak board. And this is a clothes builder. The bees cannot get out of this box. And so I've got a, this is called an eek. It's a little two inch spacer. It's got vents on it and it's made from from a hardware cloth, but it's double stringy. It's on the inside and outside. So bees from the bottom box cannot touch bees in the top box. They can't transfer queen hormone through the screen because they can't touch each other. And they'll only be in here for a day. So in the bottom of this box, there's a you know, peanut butter lid with a sponge in it, which is full of water. It's laying right down there. And I got quite a few bees. So I'm gonna give them this frame, fresh larva. Let's stick it right in the middle. And close these up. And you leave them. You know, I'll be here tomorrow anyway, and I'll check that. And as long as they're started the cells, I'll take this off. and need a queen excluder. And once they started the cells, they'll finish them. Oh, it, uh, once they start them, though, they aren't going to yeah, leave. Yeah, you can. You can. So essentially, we're going from a a closed cell builder to a queen right finisher. What you can do is you could have two colonies side by side. You could start bees in one with no queen, and you got a colony next to it, maybe two, three boxes tall with a queen excluder. You can stick them in the top box over the excluder, they'll finish them. We did that last year here. You start them off. I usually give them one or two days in the, in the cell builder to start, and move them to the finisher. And the bees in the finisher, they don't know. As long as they're making queen cells. As long as it's over that excluder, the queen can't get to it, they'll finish them out.
Yeah. If the queen can get up there, she will, yeah. And then we do this lock here. So this box is an open door. Mm -hmm. What we had here earlier, we had this was over there. We had three boxes oh, deep full of beer. So we went through the boxes. Yeah, kind of, kind of study how much we took eight frames, or actually seven frames from this to these boxes with no brew. And I put them in there and I shook a whole lot of bees in them. And we found the queen we stuck her over here. So by moving the bees around, the queen's on this side, she's not going to go anywhere. The brood's in there, she's going to stay with the brood. So all the foragers are coming back over here. So the population in this box would be huge. You could, you could probably put 30 cells in here and make 30 cells. There's enough bees in the box. I don't want 30 cells. If I got 30 cells, I wouldn't do it 30 cells. <laughs> Stick there. And this I'm going to put back over here. Cool. Alright, so recap of stuff we did today. Um, in the yard, we put together a combination of a, a closed cell builder cloakboard kind of situation. It's a, it was a beehive two boxes deep. We stuck a divider between them with a ventilated bottom, like a closed builder, but actually kind of a cloakboard to just split them. And they'll just be in there overnight. We put one frame of grafts in there. And then across the yard, we took a box that was um, three boxes deep, shook a bunch of bees in a box, um, put seven frames of just comb and nectar, no brood, in that box. We took the original colony, just moved it over two feet, spun it around backwards with the queen in there. So all the foragers now are coming back to my cell builder. And that cell builder now is bearding up in the front. I can see it from here. It's got lots of bees. So given 24 hours, we check it tomorrow. And I'll take some pictures. And I expect we'll find a bunch of queens. He's seen really nice class. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>